The reason we're doing that is because we've become aware from science that there are a number of stressors for our oceans that are impacting not only the ecosystem that would be found in those areas, but it has a knock-on effect for ecosystems that are in our um, territorial waters. It has an impact on the food we eat. It has an impact on how our, our climate is dealing with, with the global warming temperatures. Um, so this is a, a way in which we can have a, a context within which we can then discuss what are the types of legal obligations we foresee for states, potentially for regional bodies, in addressing those types of stressors. In terms of implementing it, how do we get this particular instrument to perhaps work with other agreements that already exist so that it perhaps won't conflict or compete with each other, but perhaps support and strengthen what's already in place? Right, so there are other agreements that deal with biodiversity, but not in areas beyond national jurisdiction. There are agreements that deal with fisheries, but they're dealt with in regional contexts, and sometimes it's specific to a type of fish. So we don't have a comprehensive framework, and the idea is to have that comprehensive framework, but you're very right. Um, there could be potential for conflicts in jurisdiction and authority, and so this agreement has to be focused on how it complements those, but also how it fills in the gaps where they exist. How does this all tie in, perhaps, from a local perspective? Right, so, so there are two ways. There's the one way where our national experience can actually help with some of the, the thinking at the international level. So we, we actually do have a very integrated approach to the management of our fisheries, which is important. We have a tremendous number of marine protected areas, so we know how they work. And again, that information can inform the um, negotiations. But I think um, what you're getting at is um, really the, the reverse of it, it's how in protecting these areas we protect what is our own. And you have to think of the ocean not in terms of its legal division, but in terms of it being one major ecosystem. So whatever happens out there will impact what happens here. And, and in that way, um, we could look at it in terms of another measure to ensure our own sustainable sustainability um, and, and, and conservation interests. And finally, uh, what happens from here now that you know this the three-day workshop is over? What's the next step? So what we've done is we've created a roadmap of the issues that CARICOM will start pushing forward at the international level. And there are two final negotiating meetings that will occur in New York at the United Nations. They're called preparatory committees, and they will be held at the end of um, March and the first week of April. That's called the third PREPCOM. And then the fourth PREPCOM will be held in July. And at that point in time, we will have come to an agreement, hopefully, on substantive recommendations for elements of this new agreement. That then moves on to a diplomatic conference to negotiate and finalize the actual agreement. So several steps before we get to the end result, but these are critical steps.